In this next video series, I'm going to guide you through a process that will help you navigate any difficult feelings. So if you're heartbroken after a breakup, or you're feeling any difficult emotion or pain, anxiety, depression, this is a really good process to follow to help you get through it. Hi, I'm Shelley Treacher from Underground Confidence. I help people to recover from different addictions, from comfort eating recovery to being involved in a toxic relationship. What this means is that I help a lot of people process emotional pain and difficulty. And I use this four-step process. Today, I'll share with you what the four-step process is. And then in the following videos, I'll go into more detail about the different steps. Step one, becoming aware of and sensing into your body's experience. Step two, naming and labeling the sensations and the feelings that you're having. Step three, honoring and bringing compassion to that experience. Step four, redirecting your body's energy to something more positive or resourceful. This is a great guideline for working through anything that's troubling you, but it's also a good thing to follow if you're feeling that craving for food, for alcohol, for scrolling, or for that person. If you're in a phase of your recovery where you really need to understand what's going on there and you want to find a really compassionate, resourceful way through it, this is the way to go. This will help you to reclaim your power and gain back control. So for the purpose of this experience, please get yourself as physically comfortable as you can possibly manage wherever you are. I'd recommend that you don't listen to this part while driving. It may be very absorbing and you may wish to close your eyes. So having got as comfortable as possible and making sure that you have all your basic needs met, that you are comfortable enough, you're warm enough or cool enough, you're not going to be interrupted, you have water or tissues or a pen and paper, whatever you might need. Then when you're ready, close your eyes if you're willing, knowing of course that you can open them whenever you need to. And start to notice your breath. You're just taking inventory here. You're just noticing whether your breath is shallow and high up in your chest or whether you're breathing quite deeply, much lower in your torso, in your chest, in your belly, in your sides, maybe even into your back. And without judgment, just follow your breath for a couple of rounds, noticing your in-breath, the pause and your out-breath. And then when you're ready, allow your breath to help you locate a feeling. For the purpose of today's exercise, I'd recommend not choosing anything too traumatic. Rather than trying to ignore this feeling, which most of us do as comfort eaters when we're comfort eating, you're encouraged to acknowledge it in your body, just in your body, to be interested in where this actually is, if you can locate that and what it feels like physiologically. Emotions begin in the body and they come with all kinds of different sensations. As you begin to stop doing things and slow down, you might feel all kinds of things. You might feel a tightness in your abdomen, tension in your shoulders, tightness in your jaw or a clamping down fizzy sensations in your legs, in your body. You might feel pain. Or maybe you feel numbness. Your heart might be racing. You might feel hot or cold. Or you might have shivers on your skin. Pins and needles. Aching. Fatigue. Anything that you feel is normal. The second stage in this process is to name and label the sensations that you're having and the feelings that you're having. Sometimes just staying with this feeling or naming it can of course calm the nervous system down as I've been saying and it can help it to shift because it's often the fear of the feeling rather than the feeling itself actually that is the difficulty. So see if some words just come up naturally to name these feelings and experiences that you're having. If you felt some tension or some difficulty in your chest, you might be feeling anxious. So here are some words for feeling anxious or afraid. Frightened. Mistrustful. Panicked. Scared. Wary. Apprehensive. If you felt a heaviness, 
You might feel fatigue, exhausted, lethargic, sleepy, weary, depleted. Or you might not be feeling much at all. Disconnected, apathetic, bored, detached, cold. Or you might find this excruciatingly embarrassing, ashamed, guilty, self-conscious, flustered. I'm going to name another few words in case they speak to you. Please do tune out any words that just don't match for you. Cranky, frazzled, perplexed, puzzled, mortified, fragile, helpless, leery, sensitive, And just to go to the other side for a while, because this is vital, let's try quiet, relaxed, sympathetic, open-hearted, amused, eager, tranquil, amazed, safe, enchanted, thankful, serene. In this video, I'm going to talk about bringing compassion to your experience, because this is vital for recovery from comfort eating, any addiction, or most psychological emotional pain. Understanding and bringing compassion to a feeling, what it wants, and meeting that need, is the most important and pivotal skill for a comfort eater to learn in recovery. Your feelings always have a message. Uncomfortable feelings like irritation, frustration, worry, hurt or shame are always pointing to what you really care about in life. They are also what needs compassion and possibly deep healing. This is entirely missed through comfort eating or addiction. It sounds counterintuitive, but what's actually needed is to do something we call supporting your defence. This is where if you feel resistant to something, for example, practicing mindfulness, you might need to allow that resistance and get curious about it before you can remove the block to actually doing it. In the case of mindfulness, people often assume it's going to take hard work or be really boring. Without really thinking about it, you might think you'd prefer to rush about and do the house chores or sit down and watch TV. But if you give yourself a minute, you might realise that you probably need to relax properly. And on further exploration, you might be a bit scared of doing that. And perhaps even think that you can't do that. You don't know how to do that. Trust me, you have it in you to relax. (laughs) But the real block is being afraid of how you might feel. Just like comfort eating, you need to explore and allow the fact that you want to comfort eat and see what that does for you before you can actually stop. Feeling feelings is often terrifying for the comfort eater because you've really had very little experience of working through them. So you might assume that they would last forever. But like I said, it's the fear of feeling alone that is the most frightening rather than the actual feeling. You're just discovering how you're protecting yourself. Often difficult feelings are designed to protect us. It's just that we get stuck in a groove that we developed early on, when really the threat isn't there anymore. And so the protection isn't needed so much. And so this process is about trying to understand what you've been through and where you've got to and what you might still be holding. Ask yourself now, what kind of state is this that I'm in? What emotions come along with this? And what is my body trying to express in this state? You may even ask how old you feel right now. Or what earlier situation seems connected to this? Maybe what memories you're having. Bring compassion to every answer that you have. And let us know. What state and feelings did you discover that might also need our compassion? In this video, I'm going to explain stage four in processing difficult emotions Redirecting your body's energy to something more positive and resourceful. This is an essential part of the four-step process. Sometimes resources will just happen naturally if you follow the other three steps. If you've followed the steps through naming and labelling your feelings and bringing compassion to that, you might naturally come up with a better solution than you had before. Having a more mindful perspective. As I've often said, if you give yourself time, if you pause, it allows your nervous system to calm down, which will give you so much more resource. 
I've given you a lot of videos and podcasts on self-regulation, embodiment and calming the nervous system. But here are three more ways. One, you can exaggerate one of the feelings that you came up with today. Exaggerate it so much that it gets ridiculed out of existence. (laughs) So if you've got a self-critical voice, I've got a self-critic right now because I've got a squeaky floorboard and it's really irritating me. So if I really exaggerate how I feel about that, you stupid cow, (laughs) how could you do this whole film on a squeaky floorboard? What is wrong with you? (laughs) Sounds stupid. (laughs) So it made me laugh. I feel a bit better. (laughs) So try exaggerating how you feel. I'll give you the next one in the next video. In this video, I'm going to bring you the second way that you can redirect your body's energy to something more resourceful. You can try having a conversation between your child, your emotional part, and your inner, more adult, sensible part. But I want to eat that chocolate. I feel really miserable. It's going to make me feel better. Oh, please. Sweetheart, I know you're feeling miserable. I'm so sorry. The chocolate's probably not even going to help you with that. What can I give you that would make you feel better? Maybe a hug. Ah, sweetheart, come here. I love you. You're the sweetest, most beautiful thing to me. Let's just sit here until you feel better. It might be a long time. I've got all the time in the world for you. In this video, I'm going to show you the third way that you can redirect your body's energy to something more positive or resourceful. You can try taking your mind to a safe place that you've experienced, to a safe object that makes you feel safe, or to a safe person or relationship. Find something that does actually make you feel safe rather than is triggering for you. This is Aloysius. Or I might think of a time when I've been by the seaside. Somehow that always makes me feel better. Apparently there is something when you look at the sea that happens to your eyes. Also happens when you look at red leaves in the autumn. (laughs) So allow your senses to guide you as to what's going to make you feel full, spacious, peaceful, happy, content. Look around your room for an object that just has meaning for you that makes you feel happy. Might be a photograph of a happy time or with your best friend. Embodying that experience, that feeling of safety, that feeling that you can say whatever you want to and it's going to be accepted. And remembering what that actually feels like in your body. This can be a great resource when you're feeling pain or difficulty. In this video, I'm going to give you a summary of everything we talked about in this series. I gave you a four-step process that helps you to manage any difficult emotion or experience you have. Step one was identifying that experience in your body. Step two was naming that experience, both in your sensations and in your feelings. Step three was bringing compassion to and understanding that experience. And step four was finding a way to direct your energy, your body's energy, to something more positive or resourceful. During this phase, I gave you three videos on different ways to do this. One was exaggeration of that feeling. Two was having a conversation between that part of you and the adult part of you. And the third one was identifying a place, an object or a person that you have felt safe with and embodying that experience. In the next video series, I'm going to talk about times when you feel emotionally invalidated. If someone denies your emotions by saying something like, you're too sensitive. I'm going to give you 10 strategies to cope with that experience to the point of feeling a lot better within yourself about who you are. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this series. I really appreciate it. This is Shelley Treacher from Underground Confidence. If I can help you recover from comfort eating or in recovering your confidence, please find me on the app stores under Underground Confidence. Thank you. Bye.